Hello, my name is Patricia Whittingslow and welcome to my talk, Cognitive Load and Go. So there's a bit to be said about me. Uh, I like simulating physical phenomena. I work on embedded systems professionally and I regularly contribute to a few tiny projects uh, in the Go ecosystem. But today I'm here to talk about something a little different. Cognitive psychology. Um, those in the field, called cognitive psychologists, investigate the processes in the brain related to learning, understanding, and problem solving. This is important to us all as programmers because if we can understand why code is hard to read or understand, then we can take action to reduce the cognitive load and then avoid bugs and have a better team build, uh, better building experience of the software uh, as a team. My knowledge on this topic comes from Thalina Hermann's book, uh, The Programmer's Brain. Uh, we'll start by looking at uh, the simplicity of Python to understand uh, these concepts, uh, which a, a language often touted as being a simple language and the best for teaching. Then we'll look at how Go stacks up, and we'll look at what uh, people in the field say about this. So we'll start with a Python example. Um, let's imagine we're working on a rather large code base. So, and we need to implement this function, is in class, to check if a student is in a class at a certain time. The name we've chosen is pretty gracious. We can already tell this function returns a Boolean. But what does it require? We'd have to find the function that creates a schedule and extract the di dictionary or map from it. Then, we know this, there's some classes being instantiated. We'd have to read up on this time of day class. And by then, we'd be ready to take on the problem at hand and write the algorithm of the function in Pythonic code. Now, let's see how we do the same in Go. From the get go, we have one notable difference types. We know our data structures in advance because Go forces us to find our data structures before we code logic. So if we look for schedule, we are immediately greeted with a lean type definition. We can then follow the trail onto time of day. And by then, after reading this amount of code, we are now ready to implement our algorithm in full. So what does Felina Hermann say in her book? Understanding what types of information variables hold is key to being able to reason about uh, making changes to code. If you don't understand what a certain variable is supposed to represent, thinking about the code will be tremendously hard. Let's think back to when we started out with the Python code. We had some to little idea of what the arguments contained. We had to read and dive deep into complex logic. Experts say that around 60% of our time is spent reading and understanding code. And thus, we should strive to make that part as clear and straightforward as possible. Even though languages like Python let us omit types, we still have to eventually reason about them. We just saw how omitting types in a function signature cost us a good amount of reading time. So here we have the code we read to solve the algorithm um, we had at hand. Uh, with standard Python, you get logic mixed into your data structures. It ends up being more code to read, and it can be confusing to search for data structures within Python code. And I feel like Go has hit a sweet spot here uh, by having its data structures be so simple, explicit, and readable. It's just so delightful to read, I'd say. And you might say, dude, you're just structs, man. Uh, and this is where I have to take a break from the cognitive psychologist's research and look elsewhere to explain this feeling of sorts. So someone once said, data dominates. If you've chosen the right data structures and organize things well, the algorithms will almost always be self-evident. Data structures, not algorithms, are central to programming. So this is Rod Pike. If we recall from um, when we were writing our Python code, 
data and logic were intertwined. Uh, there is no hierarchical differences like in C-like languages. Mike Acton, a notable figure in the C++ world, says, the purpose of all programs and all parts of those programs is to transform data from one form to the other. If you don't understand the data, then you don't understand the problem. Conversely, you can understand the problem by understanding the data. So others also assert that the data structure precedes the code and coincidentally forces us to find the data structures beforehand. And this dude's holding a computer, so you know he knows his stuff. <laughs> Show me your tables, and I won't usually need to see your flow charts. They'll be obvious. Once again, Fred Brooks is telling us that code is defined by the data. And need I say more? <laughs> data is central to programming. Understanding your data empowers you. And Go simplicity aids in understanding data structures at play in a code base. So let's go back to the code red. Do we want structs or that? So that's why, from now on, when we hear a language is simple, I want us to ask ourselves, is it simple like Python or simple like Go? Thank you.